At the end of the day, self-care as a leader all comes down to budgeting your cups, not pouring from an empty oxygen mask, and putting on your spoons before assisting others. Okay, I may have jumbled that. It's week three of the fall semester, okay? I'm tired and I need a break. Anyway, this week's episode is all about ensuring you can take a break before you get so tired you jumble your self-care cliches. Let's get started, shall we? Welcome to the Kind Leadership Challenge, where every Monday morning I teach you to heal your school or library in the next 10 minutes. I'm Dr. Sarah Clark, founder of the Kind Leadership Guild, where I use my PhD in higher ed leadership and nearly two decades of experience at academic libraries to advise a growing community of educational and library leaders who want to build a better world without burning out. Kind leaders make the tough decisions without becoming jerks. We plan effective systems that help us get the job done with less money and effort. And we've learned that once we stop controlling and start collaborating, any vision becomes possible. To be clear, kind leadership's pretty simple, but it's rarely easy. So if you're up for a challenge, stick around to learn how to create a legacy that will strengthen your community long after you're gone. Let's get this out of the way right up front. Since at least the Clinton administration, if not earlier, every president of the United States that I've seen has been criticized by somebody or other for taking too many vacations. And yet, whether or not you agree with the various things each administration did, they still got plenty of stuff done while taking time for self-care. Ergo, if the leader of the free world has the ability to take a break and recharge a little bit, you do too. It may just take some changes in mindset, routines, and structures. And before you laugh at my use of the word just, bear with me. No, I can't send your toddler away to Bermuda for a week while you chill at home, or vice versa. But there are always elements of how we use our time that are within our control. So let's identify and optimize them. First off, resting is one of the few elements of our life that can actually generate more time than it takes. For instance, I normally write these episodes on a Monday night and record them on Tuesday. However, yesterday, Monday, I was beat when I got home from work. I had more or less nonstop meetings after the usual first week of the semester lull, and after spending an hour after dinner staring at an irritatingly blank Word document, I gave it up as a bad job and just cracked open a book for the rest of the evening. That actually worked out well, because while letting my brain rest, I actually got an idea for this week's episode, banged out an outline before bed, and roughed out the script over lunch today. And now I'm recording it more or less my usual time, only with more energy and less obvious circles under my eyes for the social media clip. Had I not come back to this episode with a fresh brain, it easily would have taken twice as long. Which is why you need to listen to your body and mind. If you're paying attention, they can serve as an early warning system that you need to rest. By yesterday evening, I was struggling to focus. But because I was also a bit anxious, I was trying to push myself through that struggle longer than I should have. We all know that when we're tired, we do struggle to understand what our emotions are telling us and are more likely to make poor decisions because our brains aren't working like they should. And since a leader is first and foremost a decision maker, we need our brains to be operating at a reasonably high level as much as possible. And that is why you need to get in the habit of taking breaks before you need them. Schedule them in advance if you can. During the summer term, I take off most Fridays and I'm going to do more three-day weekends on a limited basis this fall now that the crunch time has passed. Yes, my emails pile up a little bit. Yes, sometimes people need to wait for a response. And yes, it's worth it for all concerned, especially the people who have to work and live with me. Of course, I can also hear some of you replying that you are running an understaffed organization, have too many mandates with too little time, are barely holding your head above water, have family commitments to juggle, etc. And for the record, I totally believe you. I am not about to ask anyone here to hustle. However, 
I suspect you signed an employment contract when you started your job, not a vow of martyrdom. You will be better off for taking a break, and your team will be better off, both because you are modeling a healthy life balance and because, well, they get a break from you. And as for your boss and other stakeholders, well, perhaps it's a good idea for them to occasionally get something a bit later than they'd like. Decisions to keep staffing or funding low have consequences. And although your administrators may not have felt they had other options themselves, experiencing the consequences of their actions and decisions will help your upper administration understand what is happening lower on the org chart and may even give them more ammunition to use with their stakeholders when it comes to funding. Okay, that sounds great. How do I do this when my task list is stretching onto page four and I have stacked post-its on top of my post-its? Well, it comes down to practicing what I call the four Ds of task management, which is a slightly tweaked version of David Allen's getting things done model, which I lived by for about the first half of my library career before I discovered bullet journaling. Put your tasks into one of four stacks. Do, delegate, defer, and delete. Do is obvious. This is the stuff that has to be done, can only be done by you, and can't wait. Delete is equally obvious. Those are tasks where it's unnecessary for you or anyone else to do this thing now or down the road. Cross them off with joy. Defer anything where the world will not end if this task is not done in the next week or so. You can either schedule it for a later date if you know for sure you'll need to have it done at a certain point, or it can go onto a lower priority list for when you have spare time. Feel free to hit pause if you need to laugh hysterically for a few moments about the idea of having spare time. Now for the most beautiful stack of all, the stuff that needs to be done but doesn't have to be done by you. Delegate. Got a task that you can do in your sleep but someone else could stand some practice with it? Delegate. Got a team member itching for a challenge? Delegate. Alternately, do you have a team member who seems to have a little too much time on their hands? Delegate. You will be surprised how much you can get off your plate and as long as you spread things around rather than loading down your hardest workers, you may actually end up strengthening your team's culture and effectiveness by letting go so that they can step up. And with that, here's my challenge to you this week. Go find a quiet day on your calendar sometime in the next few weeks and schedule a day off. This is a hectic time of the year for those of us governed by the academic calendar but the adrenaline that carried us through the first couple of weeks is probably starting to wear off by now. Once you've booked that day off, ensure you won't just come back to an even longer list by practicing the four Ds of task management to pare your tasks down to the bare minimum. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to add a to-do to my task list for tomorrow. I gotta tell my boss's assistant I'm taking next Monday off. Thanks as always for listening to the Kind Leadership Challenge and for growing humanely, managing effectively, and creating collaboratively in your own organization. And if you know someone who might find this episode useful, hit share in your podcast app or send them over to kindleadershipchallenge.com slash 85. Never doubt that day by day, you're building a better world, even if you can't see it yet. So until next time, stay kind now. Oh, one last thing. If you're ready to take on this week's challenge, but not sure how to start, head over to kindleadershipchallenge.com slash next to download the Next Steps Checklist.